Hey, this is David Walensky back with another interview from the audio archives of Don't Die. This time I'm bringing to you the first half of my Q&A with Anton Rizbe. He and I spoke on October 17th, 2015. Uh, at that time, he was a 24-year-old lapsed video game player living in Sweden. Just a quick reminder, if you'd like to read transcripts of other interviews I've been doing these last few years, you can hop on over to nodontdie.com. Uh, you'll also see a link to my Patreon, where your support helps me continue the work that I've been doing these last few years. And now, here's Anton Riesbe. Um, Well, this is going to be interesting with regards to pronunciation, but uh, my name is Anton Riesbe, which, well, you know how it's spelled, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, 24 years old. I live in... Uh, Fallen, Sweden, which is a bit, well, it's a bit below the middle of Sweden, so it's like above Anchorage mm. in terms of uh, latitude or whatever, longitude, I guess. No, it's latitude, yeah. Um, <laughs> was that all of the stuff? <laughs> the other half is just sort of like, you know, how um, how did you come to lose interest in yeah, video yeah. game? Um, sort of why, why, why did you want to talk about it? I've had a lot of like video games is in, it's it's as a concept very interesting to me because it, it's always been but it's never hit me the same way a lot of other media has and like when I was a teenager I was extremely interested in music um and I sort of uh, went onto music review sites and all kinds of stuff like that and I found that really interesting uh and and you know you see these people with really nuanced kind of uh, very very interesting view about these things talk about it critically and and there's um there's a lot of appreciation for it people don't know what video games are and they debate what it is and it's like it's everything feels very i don't want to say simple but it feels very much like and people blame this on being a young medium which i guess compared to music everything is but uh I don't I people really. Have, uh, people have probably been playing games as long as they've been yeah, playing music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably some kind of games. Yeah, maybe even before. Who knows? I guess some sort of apes. At least, at least games. all the way. Yeah, at least all the way back to like ancient Egypt. I know. Um, Music's been around as long as humans have. I mean, like it's it's. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's it's. <sighs> It feels very simple and naive compared to a lot of other stuff, and I think people usually blame that on it being very young, and I don't think that's very wise. Uh, I don't think video games inherently are stupid or bad. Well, I tend to say that, but that's facetiously. Uh, I mean, you're you're chuckling a little bit, yeah. But um, it feels like the possibility space and the way people approach it is very limited by who does it and how they do it and that they don't want it to grow up. So, um... Uh, I don't know how much of this I'll, I'll leave in, but I was, uh, I was... <laughs> I've been explaining to my brother about, like, video games and sort of where they're at. I mean, I sort of inherited an interest because he had the Nintendo and I was not allowed to play it. And <laughs> he, uh, he lost interest and then I started to play it and then, like, I just stuck with him. But um, I was showing him like uh, Ho Hokum. Oh yeah. Because uh, he he he's under the impression. I mean, it's just like he just, he's a different sort of uh, guy than I am, and video games sort of stress him out. And I, I completely understand why they might stress people out. But he's just sort of like gone off the deep end really fast. He's like, oh, I didn't know games could be like you know colorful and uh, you know not really goal oriented. And I was talking to him about like. I think, like, the company that made Hohokum just, like, went on hiatus or something. Like, I guess the game didn't sell really well, and, like, oh, I, don't know, I don't know how much this... Yeah, I don't know how much this happens in, like... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You I was going to say, like, I don't think a lot of games sell very well. <laughs> this is true, too, but I wonder how much of that, like... I feel like people say, like, you know, they want to have something that's different. That's but... just bullshit all the time. Like, that applies to every kind of media. People say... Was uh, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm just saying, like, yeah, like, 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 yeah, like they say that, but then, like, when they're given that, like, it, not a lot of people really want that. No, absolutely not. And and there's uh, there was, um, I don't, I can't remember their names, but there was a movie podcast I listened to, and they were like, uh, they really appreciated the Darren Aronofsky movie Noah because it was so weird, mm-hmm. and they said. Uh, a lot of people who say they want different stuff hated that movie, and that's bullshit because that's the most different thing they'll see in years. Mm. And well, you know, that sort of implies there's uh, novelty values has has something like inherently good about it. But uh, and that's kind of why saying something different is is uh, what you desire is is sort of bullshit because you don't actually want something different. You want something different that that's what you like as well. You want something different in the way that you want it to be different. Yeah, pretty much. It's like I don't <laughs> like how much you have to kill people. Okay, we made the same game, but with different like default interactions, and it's like okay, the, now it's very different and very good. Mm. But they don't say that either because they go up the walls about walking simulators being bad or something. I don't know. So I mean, you said that games make you depressed and how insecure they are about themselves. Um, tell me a little bit about like how you started to notice this insecurity and why that depresses you. I didn't really think of games. Well, it's sort of uh, tangentially related to the whole games start thing, uh, mostly in the way that when I was a teenager, I was getting very interested in art, like early teens, I was 14, probably 15, and I was very interested in music criticism, as I said, and I was like reading the reviews and seeing if pe- people thought things were original or new or fresh or strange or different. Um, when it comes to games, I never considered them as having like a, a, a... I never considered the critical perspective as being something particularly important to games. Because I thought games, like, basically, I, I was a AAA kind of guy, to some extent, mm-hmm. because I sort of divorced them immensely in my head. I was playing a lot of uh, stuff people made in Click and Play and stuff like that early on, and I played a bunch of f- f- shareware stuff. Uh, so it's always strange to me when people go like, oh, indie games are so different. It's like, yeah, that stuff was always around. But uh, the sort of har- harsh criticism or, like, uh, concept of it as an art form never really occurred to me, probably because they felt so simple compared to a lot of stuff. I was reading a bunch of books back then, like sort of, uh, you know, pretentious teenager books. <laughs> like what, uh, Catcher in the Rye? Or? No, I don't think that's a particularly popular book here, but um, uh, well, what was I reading? That was, later on I read, uh, I read everything by Franz Kafka. Mm. Oh, okay. I think that's so actually were... really great books, and I, I, I guess it would be stupid to think anything else because they're so acclaimed by people to know their shit. So just going like, no, they're actually bad. It's just such a shitty opinion to have. But um, you know, when, when you sort of read something like that, it's of course a very different sphere. And if you learn the stuff about like art history or what like the newest music is or stuff like that. It feels like the, the, the differences between games, at least back then, or like in the major spheres, was just minuscule, and uh, it didn't feel like a, a real art form. And I think that's because people weren't like daring to take any risks. I'm kind of I mean, I, now, but No, no, that's the nature of this. I mean, I, I get the sense, like... Um, I mean, I, t- I talked to some developers who, like, they feel like people aren't even really making what they want to make, I think, because of the just simple uh, market forces. You know, like, I think there's the fear that if you really make something different in a way that people won't expect, it won't sell well. They make Um, the same stuff as well. I mean, like, uh, if you compare stuff to... People compare it to movies all the time, which I think is kind of dumb, because a game is made very much like a cartoon. It's not made like a movie at all. Yeah, there is no world to begin with when you make a game, so you can't film it anywhere. Uh, but uh, you have stuff like Predator, which is an action movie and it's very straightforward. But I think that's just it's it's a phenomenal action movie though, and it's very mm-hmm. different from a lot of uh, other action movies. It's very simple. It's not like uh, in like intellectually sophisticated. <laughs> so I mean, like, 
Yeah, I mean, it's like what what keeps things about video games like insecure? Like like who? I'm not not even asking you to like point fingers, but like what what do you think keeps it that way? It's hard to say. I think it's uh, it's well, there's I think there's probably a lot of reasons. Uh, one of them is is uh, it, it has you know like nerd culture origins. Mm-hmm. And within nerd culture, people love indulging to the max in the thing they like. So, like, ideally, you'll have a, you'll have like tons of sequels that further explore the same world over and over and over again, and that kind of thing. And you'll have a very explicitly told stories and very, very samey topics because the same nerds want to play it and the same nerds make it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what's been kind of interesting is like, um, you know, games started off as um, just text, you know. Yeah. And I guess even even before they were on screens, they were just text as well. But um, you know, we're seeing like this weird, huge revolution. You can't see it, but I'm circling my arm in the air. Yeah. Um, now I can see oh, where it, it, Yeah, okay, there you go. I, I, need, I, I made a big sound next to the microphone. Um, it, you know, um, where, like, these weird two forks in the, in the road are, like, virtual reality or twine games. And twine games are, like, kind of bringing us back where we started. And I don't know that I see a lot of people, like, realizing that, but I feel like people aren't really that interested in just text games, which is weird because, like, text games is, like, you know, um, where we get a lot of just, like, the basic concepts and a lot of other games. like Primordial just you know game soup. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but do you feel like that? Like, are, are, have we just gotten, like, so spoiled where, like, we can't even handle, like, going back in a way, like, going back to basics? I have a, just some issue with reading text on screens, so Twine games have been, like, I try to play uh, Porpent, Time Perpentine? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried yeah. to play your game. Uh, what's it called? Howling Dogs? How Screaming mm-hmm. Dogs? I can't remember. Uh, but every screen had so much text, it sort of felt daunting to me. And not because I don't like reading. But, you know, I like reading uh, as much as anybody. But uh, seeing that sort of amount of text and, and knowing that uh, there's consequence to each click, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I guess I'm just not into that, and especially not on a on a on a screen. Like if it was in a book, if it was one of those. I've never had one of those uh, uh, sorcery or uh, not sorcery. What were they called? The adventure books. Choose your own uh, adventures. Choose your own adventure books. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never had or read one of those, but I imagine that would be much easier for me to to parse. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and also you can cheat in those. This is true. <laughs> Uh, you, I mean, you can cheat in other games too, but I guess it's yeah, harder it's, to cheat in twine, twine games. Yeah, I've heard you can cheat in twine games. I, I made a mini arg for some pals on Skype, and one of the dudes was like, "He got caught on the first step because he cheated himself through the twine part." <laughs> and there yeah. was a bunch of different download links and different branching paths in the twine thing, and he was like, went to the, straight to the end, so he only got one file because it was like, "This is the link I'm searching for." So he didn't get the other files that were like. Uh, uh, I don't know what's called them false threads, but they were actually like had some important information in them <laughs> because he could just and he's he's kind of uh, net code savvy, so he just HTML the whole thing and went like, oh yeah, the code p- points here, so I'll go there. Well, um, so tell me a little bit about like uh, tell me about like um you know like how video games like I don't know like you, you're basically saying like you lost a passion for them, but like. Tell me a little bit about like what what your passion for them was like. I have a very, I think it's probably an unusual relationship. It was probably not among developers, uh, but um, well, I think it was maybe eleven uh, or something when we got a, a copy of uh, the Games Factory of some mm-hmm. demo disc, and it's uh, like click and play but more advanced, and. Uh, we made a bunch of games. Of course, we couldn't save them, so you just uh, control alt delete it out, and it was like want to restore your document, and that worked. Mm-hmm. So we had like one game going at a time, and I always found it more fun to make the games than to play them. And same with like level creators for stuff like Revolt or. Uh, th- uh, actually, what I'm doing right now as I'm talking is flying around a map in Hammer. <laughs> You're playing a game right now? No, no, no. I'm just in in Valve's Hammer editor for Half Life One. 
<laughs> flying oh, around okay. the map I made yeah. the other day. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of always been the thing. Uh, like, I'm interested in, in where, like, what kind of graphics stuff they're doing. I'm always, ha- always happy to hear, like, what the new id tech engine's going to do and stuff like that. And I'm interested in... Uh, and all that stuff, and I'm interested in what people want to do with games, but most games I just don't like playing. Well, I mean, I think, like, Ho Hokum is a interesting thing, not because I think it's, like, you know, like, it like it, it clearly didn't do amazingly well, and I don't know if it's, like, the most captivating game. It's certainly pretty to look at, but, um, you know, like, that's an example of a video game where they sort of, like, are you familiar with it? Yeah, I know what it is. You're like yeah, a little I, spirit flying around in a 2D space. And like a, a worm of, or something. Yeah, yeah. a bunch of nice patterns and colors everywhere. But I mean, like that's like a game where they they based their work. They based it around like an existing artist's work. Um, oh, they did. Yeah, uh, the artist is Richard Hogg, and that's just sort of like his art style. And he collaborated with them. But uh, why is that like super unusual in video games? I, f- <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of der- derivative stuff in like most games, you know. And of course, yeah, I, I think that's probably a shitty, very postmodern opinion to to sort of have that you go down the the path of going like, where is this influence from? But uh, it's it's. But I think it's yeah. kind of inevitable to, to sort of do that. And it's, and a lot of games are like, yeah, this is. I remember reading a, a design document. I think it was a uh, maybe. Arcane or some company was going to make a, yeah. a modern thief was going to make the original new modern thief game and it was like aesthetic and everything inspired by the blade movie and I was like okay yeah. and th- that stuff happens all the time in video games and people talk about like yeah we, we have this dude on team and he's going to take some inspiration from this and it's like it's never explicitly trying to be an artwork it's always like this is a video game but it looks a bit like this painting I like <laughs> it's, it's never going all the way and being like, this is a bunch of paintings as a video game, you know? I mean, so you're saying like that sort of makes games less ambitious in a way? I don't actually fully know what I'm saying. Uh, it's sort of... Uh, <laughs> you don't have to back away from it. I mean, like, what, what do you... What, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm just trying to understand, yeah. It's the typical parsing thing of being like, yeah, I had this thought, but I don't know why. Uh, yeah. It's like math equations, but you, um, well, you, you get a, I, I'm really weird about, uh, artistic stuff in games, uh, often because I feel like a lot of it tries to look different, but looks kind of similar, even though it's like, even indie stuff, unless, uh, you know, it's really outrageously weird. Yeah. A lot of indie stuff looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, Steven Universe or something. <laughs> you know, it's it's the flavor of the month cartoon that people's, people are into. And then they yeah. do something like that. And it's sort of the, the, the vibe a lot of people end up going with. Uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, where was I? But I don't think they, they consciously try to, to be... That's also a case of them being within the nerd circle still, you know? When they go mm. for cartoons, they go for the same people that already love that kind of game. Yeah. If you do something that looks uh, like... You know, you could, do a, you could do a video game that looks like Francis Bacon paintings. Mm-hmm. And that's probably never been done. Yeah. And you could take, like, explicit inspiration from that or, like, uh, try, to, try to be something uh, new based on the Francis Bacon paintings because of the different possibilities based of video games. But people, I feel like they don't really want to do that. I feel like they want to to sort of not necessarily go for safe cards, but they like the same things at the same time usually. And that's sort of, I guess Ho Hokum doesn't have such an outrageous style that I feel like it's it's it would be halted by how it looks though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it has that soft like pattern style, a bit like uh, some some flash games used to have. Yeah. So I, I can't see why it would be necessarily chastised for its style particularly, but I think a lot of times people just want this specific thing or like they go for the sort of same thing as as, as their pals do and it ends up being a, mm-hmm. a bit of the same, well, I don't know. I, I don't really know. 
it's yeah. No, it's okay. Um, I mean, you said <laughs> let the record reflect. Like you just you just sighed, but I mean, I mean, you said that like you know you you feel like um the culture and and uh the culture that loves games and the culture that makes games tends to make you a little bit sad even though you love some of those games sincerely yeah um i mean is this sort of what we've already been talking about or is there more to it it's well i think i don't really I like I don't know how to phrase this. Uh, you get um, you get the people who who take inspiration from something but don't bother doing anything different with it. And in this case, in 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 the case of Hohokam, the game actually is directly supposed to be that inspiration. You know, mm-hmm. it explicitly is that artist's style and work. Like they 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 came uh, they, they they like rolled with him and went like. This is the the stuff we want for our game, and yours, we really like your paintings, whatever that kind of thing. So it's mm. it's explicitly his work, and it's not like inspired by, because a lot of stuff seems like it's inspired by something, but they don't bother doing anything else. So it's not just inspired; it's like it's like a, a cover, even though it's a different medium. Often it's like when uh, you mean like a cover song? Yeah, yeah. It, it sort of becomes, and and so it sticks like... in the culture for a while as well. You have a. I think Lee Alexander is phenomenal. I think she okay, she occasionally kind of makes me mad. Uh but I think that's probably good. Like I think that's probably good effort from her side. Mm-hmm. Uh but she had this sort of hang up about everything supposed to be Riot Girl for a while because Gone Home had come out. Okay. And that sort of vibe sticks around in the culture and people were like now this company's making a Riot Girl or Grunge game, and now this company's taking inspiration from Riot Girl or Grunge. And it was like, is it good because it's the same? It was <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I I get tired of things like half a bite in. Yeah. I don't know if that's that's probably really bad. Well, I, I, no, it's not. It's not bad. It's just it's it's your opinion. I mean, I I don't know. I'd rather just I'm see something I haven't. I'm not a person. Usually, it's like uh, if if I if I go for a Hagen Dazs ice cream bucket, I go like four spoons <laughs> in, and I'm like, I'd like a different flavor. <laughs> but like, I don't want to eat ice cream anymore. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that relate to video games? What are you saying? Like, you just you. Uh, you lose interest, or you when two ca- you games come out that are like roughly similar, like, like they're inspired by each other. There isn't a bar I want to fill with more stuff. People are like, "Why isn't there more of this thing in in culture all the time?" And usually there is a lot more of that thing, but you don't know about it. So that's a stupid thing to say to begin with. But uh, it's I don't think that's a good uh, opinion. I I, well, <laughs> I, I I think it's. Uh, compared to mine, at least, which is the good opinion, apparently, obviously. Uh, you have the good, you have the good opinion. Yeah, yes. it's the one that's right. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, you have a. You use the internet, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I've seen that sort of attitude. <laughs> um, okay, but uh, it's very, it's a very normal one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't actually think that at all. I'm actually I actually know the opposite don't. side, but uh, I, as, as do I. But yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, but you get like, uh, why isn't there more of this? So wh- why don't people do more of this? And I'm like, yeah, but you just like this sort of, uh, you just like this specific thing. Do you, are you sure you want more of that? Because it's like, you don't want an expansion pack. You want you, you, what you really want, I think, is something that gives you the same feeling again. But that's never the same thing, at least not to me. So here's the thing I'm always trying to figure out, which is like, I feel like. People look at the industry games and there's this attitude that like, oh, you know, like that's their job. They're supposed to be just, you know, doing sequels and oh, they're like Hollywood and oh, this and oh, that. You know, the independent space, the people with the least amount of money, those are the ones who should be taking the biggest creative risks. But I feel like unless you are predisposed to scrape and scrape and scrape and find out what are the right websites that will fit with your sensibility that happen to cover stuff that's pretty different, like... I mean, can you really fault anyone for just concluding that, like, you know, 
it feels like it's the same thing over and over and over again. Like to use your comparison, like you know, what if you feel like you've had every flavor of Hagen Dazs? Yeah, but yeah, but it's also, it's also <laughs> the case of uh, with video games. I think Robert yeah. Yang talked a lot about this. They tend to yeah. not be inspired by anything but video games. I'm sure he's not the first to say that, but I I'm think certainly that's, well, he's probably not. But I really like the dude because he's from the Half Life community, much like me. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's like you see the games, and then you see the copycats, and then you see the copycats of the copycats, or like the original company made a comp- like a copy of the copycat game of their game. It's, it's, it gets kind of stupid, and there's tons of it usually, or or yeah. it's like what it's what is really popular now. People are like. Oh yeah, remember that kind of game with that kind of graphics or that kind of controls? That was really cool. And then they do an well, exact like, copy uh, of that. <laughs> have you ever heard of Mockbusters? Oh, what's that? Mockbusters are like this this cottage industry of uh, production companies that make movies that are like oh yeah yeah those the they knock off some big big movies yeah, yeah and they they make the the cover art look kind of the same and stuff like that. I'm trying to find a. I'm gonna look up real quick, just like a name or two. Yeah, and they're named stupidly similar to things, so people like confuse them or whatever. Ah, uh, like transmorphers. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes I feel like you know that's actually the way that like the independent games sometimes, especially at least the ones that make bank. You know. I was gonna say at least the ones that seem to get pretty popular, and so I don't know. I mean. When did things? I used this word before, but like, when did things get to be so narrow? Where like, it's strange. It's really weird. I think. Well, it's you should. I. My, it's like my if people of, don't even seem to get rewarded for taking big weird risks. No, not know? at all. People don't care. It's. I think uh, the boogeyman is the internet, but the internet is such a big thing, and it's been around for so long. But you know, mm-hmm. people people go back to the nineties about like the, remember when people did really weird stuff and different things and you have those Japanese games like the Dreamcast game where you like feeding a fish with a human face. Yeah, Sea Man, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing is so strange and unusual. And that kind of thing was like somebody paid money to develop that and put it on the console back then and think, oh, that was actually 2000s and but, Leonard, oh, but that was the case too where they got, you know, someone from another discipline involved, Leonard Nimoy. Was oh, the yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's multimedia. That that was that was what made the nineties and early two thousands. But you have a yeah. Um, well, I don't think multimedia was a popular word after two thousand at all. But uh, you have a you had like uh, I don't know if you heard the Looking Glass um, interviews. Um, what are those? It was a podcast kind of series with a... I can't remember who the guy was. was part of like the Boston, Boston University, MIT, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Who did uh, interviews with people from Looking Glass talking about how it was back then and what they're doing now and stuff like that. And you had people like Terry Brocious is in games now uh, who did some writing and uh, stuff for, uh, for Dishonored and she did the, the voice showdown back in the day things like that but she came from I think she was a, I think she worked at a bank and and her uh, I think maybe she already had married Terry Brocious who was at Looking Glass he was doing music because he was mainly in a band and yeah. I was like yeah I'll go from band to video games that sounds good and then she went mm-hmm. from bank to video games and she started making levels for Thief 2 yeah and like I can't imagine pulling someone from you know you don't get that today where someone from well, that sounds like some grumpy old bullshit, but you don't get the sort of situation where someone out from the street sort of pops in and it's like, yeah, I want to make video games. You always get the people who went to some sort of video game education, and that's why you don't get a lot of mixed blood into the occasion. Yeah. Well, um... I meant to say equation, but I said occasion. It's also yeah. a nice of words. Uh <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, like it's 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 it's. So I mean, like what 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 would, what would you like to see more of out of out of video games? Like, what would make them interesting for you again, or or less depressed or sad about them? <laughs> I, I want. Which, by the way, you sound like you sound like a cheery guy. By the way, so I don't want to be painting you as. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the thing that takes us kind of put me across as like the mopiest, grouchiest. 
Um, I'm, you know, while, while, while you're thinking about how to answer these questions, I'm thinking about how it's going to look in print. And so I want to make sure we're saying stuff acknowledging that, like, you don't sound really grumpy and mopey. And you sound <laughs> totally fine. But I mean, you know, like, what, what would, uh, what would make you more optimistic about games though? You know? Well, I think part of it's on me though, because I get so fed up with things. Mm. Uh, but I like the really extremely critical views. And I don't mean that, like, I like the views that are critical of their own criticism as well. You have uh, Liz Ryerson, who did uh, Problematic, and uh, she did the soundtrack for Dysphoria and Mirror Moon. Mm -hmm. She has this... I think people have a hard time with her because she's so harsh, but she has this critical view of everything. Like, she she does not take any prisoners. She's like, if, if something is... She can be like... Uh, liberals talk about body image feels alienating to me which is like you can't say that they're the good guys you know <laughs> and, and I, I think like more very critical people actually getting involved with trying to make the things yeah and also people who don't necessarily want to make that video game that they loved as a kid you know you gotta get some people who don't just do video games and I think Fulbright's probably doing that really well. Uh, yeah. They got uh, Nina Freeman in, who has like a poetry background, but she's made a couple games now. But I don't think a lot of companies can go like, "Yeah, we had this, we have this poet on as a game designer." But why not? Yeah, I don't see I why mean, not. I mean, I mean no, poets need jobs. <laughs> <laughs> they most assuredly do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a level designer as well, and I don't have any formal education about that stuff at all. Which yeah. is, yeah, I don't know if I can call myself. A, I'm not a published level designer because I made levels since I was like 12, but I've never put anything out. You're a you're a craftsman then, I guess. Yeah, it, 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 it's what, you went through an apprenticeship through the community, and well, not really. You, I haven't talked to anybody about my levels. Well, I have a uh, like Skype friends and people from early Half Life communities. Yeah. But I haven't showed them much and stuff like that. I, I should put something out one day. I saw the new Davy Reading game. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it begins with it. I, I haven't played it, but a friend suggested I did. And it sort of begins with, like, this is a pal of mine. He's made a bunch of stuff that he scraps all the time. It's too bad. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is embarrassing. Because <laughs> mm. that's me. I've been, I, I have several hundred levels I've never shown anyone. <laughs> I've put most of them in the bin, though. It's like... Oh, not, not like intentionally, but it's like I make a bunch, not necessarily finish most of them, and then eventually it's like, oh, my computer crashed. Well, whatever. I don't care much about what's on there anyway. So. Well, you were saying that like you know a lot of stuff in games and the space around games like there are you you said there are just many insanely passionate but unnecessary opinions that hinge on minor details about them. Um, you probably said this a while ago, so I don't know if you remember, but, I mean, what... what Sounds what, um, interesting. What, yeah, well, tell me about that. What, do you remember or no? I have no idea. Uh, I can look it up really quick if you want and just see if, it, yeah, if you don't see remember. Yeah, see if I can do something for my... I mean, basically, it's, it's, I think it probably what you're saying is just, like, why... Not even necessarily the politics of what people are saying around games all the time. Like, you know, like, there's a question I ask, and I don't know if I asked you this, and maybe this would get us there, too, is just, like, you know, like, what do you find boring or repetitive about the conversation around video games online? I don't think I can give a specific example, like, uh, a specific, like, um, worded opinion on that, but there's, there's like, symptomatic stuff of it. You have uh, Anita Sarkeesian, who is, like, she's a bit of a godsend in the games community because nobody was talking about the stuff she was talking about before her. Uh, yeah. I still, like, have some problems with the fact that she won't, like, take a lot of nuance in things and sort of uh, appreciate them in, in their own context. She sort of puts them into her own, like, boxes occasionally, and that sort of bothers me, even though it mm -hmm. may be, there may be good reasons to do that. Um, her ideas for good games still aren't very different from the games that are around. It's like, why don't people try to make this game? And it's like Zelda. And it's like, hmm, you have a very different perspective <laughs> than most people in games, and you want to make the same game that everybody already knows. That's too bad. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a lot of flack for that. Sorry. I don't think so. Why would you get flack for that? 
I don't know. People are really sensitive to these topics. I guess she yeah. probably gets worse, though. I don't think she minds. I think I think I think that would be all right. <laughs> I mean, um, she's heard some shit. She's heard some stuff. Um, you know, I wonder, like, to you, like, what seems to be the difference in people arguing about video games versus uh, people arguing about politics? Does there seem to be any difference at all? Boy. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, how so? Uh, I I don't know how to put like how to how to explicitly put it that the arguments are so fucking stupid about video games usually. Like yeah, like, they're they're like, like YouTube comment arguments. It's like comparing them to politics in this case. It's like it it's like when people talk politics in a YouTube comment thread. It's not mm-hmm. like politics debates in, in newspapers. It's so far from that. It's usually just like, yeah, I have this opinion. And other guys like, yeah, I don't agree with your opinion. It's like, yeah, fuck you, you piece of shit. And it just go, <laughs> goes on from there. Yeah. And like 2014, that was a nightmare year for that sort of thing. It was so depressing. Yeah. You had a, a lot of people, like probably good, decent people, sort of felt the, the need to take a harsh stance on that sort of thing. And it was it was kind of heartbreaking to see like, some good developers, well, I think good people with interesting ideas, sort of be like, if you don't take a strong stance, you're like, you're on the bad guy's side. And it was, that was a shame, really. It was, because people said really mean stuff to each other. People, people called each other out for nothing and people went like, it's a, a typical sort of thing. There's a comics artist called Sarah Horrocks. She writes comics and she's pretty great. She, um, mm-hmm. she pointed out that if you're involved in some sort of scandal on Twitter or anything like that, the only winning move is to avoid it completely and sort of not talk to anyone because they'll forget it in a week. But if you try to defend yourself, you're like, you're in, I don't know, you're dead. Did you, uh, did you notice what I did in the last week? Defend yourself? Uh, I, I, oh yeah. Here's my ar- <laughs> did you notice what I did? Did you just sort of, <laughs> I disappeared for a yeah. week. <laughs> I mean, I, I tweeted the, the thing, and then I did an interview, and then I tweeted another thing saying, like, hey, you know, I want to talk to everybody, so here's the link on my site that's always been up, and then I'm, you know, I'm tweeting a little bit. I tweeted about this interview, but it's a losing it's a losing fight, and I think... It's completely... There's no way to win. There, there's no way to win. I, I think what ends up happening oftentimes is that even people who agree with you will start to think you're a jerk in some way. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, well, yeah, you shouldn't use this word. Or it was, uh, it happened with Frank Lance. I think he, in his case, it's not so black and white though, because I think he probably said yeah. some kind of dumb stuff in his defense. Mm-hmm. But I think his article, I, I didn't find anything wrong with his article. You know, it's, it's just, it's, you, you gotta approach it like you approach anything. Uh, yeah. And, and well, I think I it, so. What I don't understand is, and this is not about the topic we were just saying, but I mean, so you 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 live in a very uh, not very different part of the world, but you live in a different part of the world yeah, than me. And you're you can't go anywhere to join games here. There's no <laughs> San Francisco here. 